The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while still it was dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciples went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first. And he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Alleluia! Alleluia! St. John, so wonderful to gather here to celebrate the foundation of our faith. We gather here because of this one event that changed the life of our story of faith. Christ is risen. He has defeated death. And therefore, we can with confidence say that because of Christ, the worst thing is not the last thing. Brothers and sisters, we are now told that there is a, a department for loneliness. You know, in some countries they have started that. People are lonely. People are anxious. People have been despairing. People have lost hope. There is a story of uh, a dad and his son who were in the Auschwitz um, concentration camp. You know, life in the concentration camp is not the best thing you can think of. And of course, the food served there is not at all good. And these two guys, father and son, while at the Auschwitz camp, were served very meager food. a thin soup with maggots floating around and a dry bread and once in a while some margarine. While they were spending their days, father started collecting the margarine whenever it was given to them. And when it was time for Hanukkah, he gathered all of this margarine and made a Hanukkah light. And the son was observing all this and son was puzzled and asked father, Daddy, why did you not use all this to sustain ourselves when it was given to us? To which the father said, My dear son, we have learned that we can live three days without water. We can live three weeks without food. But we cannot live three minutes without hope. 
My dear friends, that is true. In the life of this man, uh, the boy, actually the son who survived, his father died and his mother died, uh, mother survived, uh, but another brother died as well. So later on, this boy became a rabbi, Rabbi Hugo Grin, who became a broadcaster and a, a leading voice in the interfaith dialogue. People have lost hope. There is nobody to give them hope. I'm told even yesterday Tom Buddington was called to the hospital to care for three um, teenagers committing, attempting suicide. And the rate of suicide is on the rise. People are afraid of so many things and among them is loneliness greatest fear people suffer from and then of course of death people are afraid to die fear of death but today's feast reminds us that you don't have to be lonely god is with us in the risen christ god has defeated loneliness defeated death defeated sin defeated everything that we think is chaining us down. There is a story of a, a man who cared for roses in his garden. His hobby was caring for the garden. And while he was doing that, his neighbors would hear him whistle louder and louder. And they thought there is something wrong with this guy because he doesn't need to whistle aloud so that you know his neighborhood can hear him so one day his neighbor was curious and peeped on to the the compound wall and observed this man and he said would you you know tone it down i mean you don't have to whistle so loud for all of us to hear to which the elderly gentleman said sir please come with me so he took him into his house where his wife lay invalid on the bed. And not only that, she was blind as well. The only thing she could do is to hear. And the, the, the man said, I do this whistling because my wife can hear and be confident that I am near, that she doesn't have to worry. This is a perfect example of what happens in our lives when we place our trust in Christ who because of the resurrection, because of his ability to be here present everywhere now, he is with us, giving us that confident hope that you are not alone. You don't have to despair. You don't have to lose hope. As the man said, you know, we cannot live without hope even for three minutes. So today's feast gives us that immense possibility that the worst thing is not the last thing. Christ has defeated the worst enemy you can think of, Satan and all his minions and all his powers to seduce us. So what do we learn from today's feast? Of course, resurrection has changed our perspective. It has given the meaning to our faith. We are here because of this one fact. Of course, if you think of the cross, cross is very important to us. But if it is only Good Friday and there is nothing after that, our faith is in vain, as Paul tells us. If Christ had not risen, your faith is in vain and our preaching is in vain. And we are the most pitiable of all people if you only had to look at the cross and there was nothing beyond that. Easter celebrates the victory over all that is deadly, all that is sinful. You have heard uh, this phrase, you know, cheap grace and costly grace. If you separate cross and resurrection, 
we would be looking for a cheap grace, resurrection without the cross. But Christianity is not founded only on, on the cross on Good Friday. It will have no meaning if it had not been for the resurrection. And because of resurrection, cross has an immense potential and a power over Satan and sin. So then it becomes a costly grace because Christ is inviting us to embrace the cr cross. Without the cross, there is no resurrection. So we celebrate that fact as well. The cross, the resurrection of Christ is the basis of our Christian faith. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, almost the entire chapter is dealing, dealing with this. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scripture. And Thomas Schreiner says of the resurrection, Christ's death and resurrection are inseparable in effecting salvation. That is why we profess at this mass, by your death and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the savior of the world. Second factor is the resurrection of Christ is the fulcrum around which everything revolves. It is a fuel that ignites our preaching, our faith to a lost world, to a world that has lost hope. We want to give them hope because of the resurrection. Third, resurrection of Christ also is salvific. It saves us. As Paul tells us again in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, if Christ had not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sin. Fourth point for us to reflect is the Easter is the guarantee of our own resurrection. That is a beautiful message. That's why Jesus tells Martha uh, at, at the time when Jesus went to visit uh, Lazarus who had died, you know, Jesus tells Martha, do not be afraid. You know, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he die. Even if you die, do not matter. it does not matter because your eternal life is assured in Christ. Therefore, my dear friends, today we gather with that good news of salvation. Christ is risen. He has defeated death. Pope Benedict XVI once uh, spoke of this beautiful experience. You know, after the homily, the priest would say uh, to the people, Conversi ad dominum, which means turn now toward the Lord. Turn to the East for the coming of Christ. And this is what we do today. At this wonderful celebration of the Eucharist, celebrating the Easter event, we want to turn our gaze unto the Lord and to the cross because of the resurrection. So fundamentally, this involved an interior event, conversion, the turning of our souls toward Jesus Christ and thus towards the living God and towards the true life and true life. And therefore, in the Mass too, soon we will hear the, the proclamation in the Sursum Corda, which means lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts, your inner self to Christ. In both of these exclamation, we are summoned, as it were, to re uh, renewal of our baptismal promises. Shortly, we will be doing that. So as we do this, remember that Jesus brings us hope. Without Jesus and without his resurrection, we will not have hope. And our faith is in vain. Therefore, do not forget that Easter, that the resurrection of Christ changes everything. Without it, we have no faith. We have no gospels, no evangelization, no church, no saints, no Christianity, no salvation, certainly no future. But what do we learn out of this great message of hope, of life, of light? As Peter proclaims to the people that, you know, he, he was ready to now stand in front of everybody and say, we have a person that we celebrate, a person who was with us, who walked among us, who was crucified, put to death, 
But then he rose again. We are the witnesses. Peter and the other apostles were timid and, you know, hiding for their life. Now we are able to proudly, boldly proclaim that Christ is risen. We are the witnesses because he appeared to us. That perhaps is a, a message for us. If you have believed in Christ, if you have been baptized, if you have pronounced your uh, vows, the baptismal promises, you know that we believe in Christ who is risen from the dead. Now you and I are called to be witnesses. How can you and I be witnesses in today's world where there is no hope? How can we grow in the virtue of hope? How can you become the beacons of hope to the people around us who have lost their hope? Remember, we can live without water for three days. We can live without food for three weeks, but we cannot live without hope for even three minutes. Please do not lose your hope. Look at the cross of Christ. Look at the risen Christ who dwells among us who constantly gives us that hope that your life matters and the worst thing is not the last thing. There is life even after death if only you believe in him. We shall now um, stand and renew our baptismal promises that takes care of our creed for today. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray for our needs as I come around to sprinkle you with the holy water. That our Holy Mother Church may be filled with the Easter joy in her remembrance and celebration of Christ's Paschal mystery. Let us pray to the Lord. That the light of the risen Christ, shining for all the world to see, may guide people to repentance and belief in the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who struggle in faith and are burdened by doubt may be strengthened. God's grace this day. Let us pray to the Lord. That this Easter season may be a time of growing in the gifts God has given us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that our beloved dead, especially Patricia Ulsner, John Katip, Pushpud Raj, 
Daniel J. Madden and Gloria Schulte and Walter Hill may share in the life of the risen one. Pray to, we pray to the Lord. Let those petitions we now make in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
exult and with the paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you it more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the ablation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints, including St. John the Evangelist, our patron, and Father Moro, Brother Andre, and on, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing health. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. Let us offer the peace of our risen Christ to one another. Behold 
the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that he should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please remain seated as we conclude our Eucharist. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, a few announcements. Happy Easter! Yeah. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Wow, wow, wow! Look at the sun. The sun is up and it's great. It's so great. Thank God, first of all, for providing us this huge, wonderful, um, uh, beachy atmosphere. Did you notice that? You have skate board and all that. Just water, beach, sun. Everything you wanted is here today. Praise God! Hallelujah! I just want to thank uh, uh, so many people who have been instrumental in uh, putting this together. Uh, first of all, a huge thanks to uh, Gavin, our uh, superhero. He's, he's amazing. Uh, he has made all things work. Great. And um, of course, we have our beautiful choir, as always. They are wonderful. Talia, our um, Talia's birthday. So, what can you say? We have put put all this together for you, Talia. <laughs> Very good. Uh, and we, uh, you know, in the beginning, this is the first time, so I had to have uh, a team put together just like that. I had a wonderful team uh, to bring all this together. So I want to thank them, the Sunrise Mass Committee, just the ad hoc committee. Thank you. And um, our Art and Environment Committee, which has done marvelous works both here and inside the church. Um, Heidi and choir, of course, the musicians, the ushers, the altar guild team, electors, sacristans, Eucharistic ministers, um, and uh, so many others who have been instrumental in putting this uh, event together. So happy to have this for the first time. So happy to see so many of you uh, rally around this uh, mass. Um, we had our photographers and videographers, and we want to thank them. Throne did well, uh, then. Great. Wonderful. Thank you all. And please know that uh, Easter um, goes on for one week. You know, it's, uh, um, it's just not for today. Any day this week is Easter. And uh, next Sunday is the Divine Mercy Sunday. And so we will have a special uh, hour, holy hour, three to four. And then, of course, tomorrow office will be closed for Easter. So before the next batch of people come, let us disperse and go home and enjoy and celebrate with ham and pork or whatever you want. <laughs> All right, the last blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the price of immortality. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast, come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. <clears throat> Go the Mass is ended, Alleluia, Alleluia. Be gentle as you leave. Be careful with the flow of traffic coming in. Merry, uh, happy Easter, <laughs> not Merry Easter.
Happy Easter! Celebrate! Thank you all for coming around.